Morning guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School back with part six of our rope clinic. So this is a reload from a video from a few days ago because that video had some imperfections in it. So I just took it completely down and I wanted to reshoot the video because I want this to be a record that people can refer back to. So if it's not right or it's not perfect or there's a mistake in the video, I don't want it out there. So I appreciate the guys who commented on the video, let me know about the mistakes that were in it. And now we're going to get this straightened out. So stay with me. Okay, guys, so like I said, we've been trying to select five different knots, hitches, and bends from each one of these categories to give you a good selection that are multifunctional in a woodland camp environment. So when we talk about bends, which is what we're going to talk about today, connecting knots, which are called bends, we want things that will connect the same diameter rope, things that will connect different diameters of rope, things that we can use for rope to rope connections as far as loop to loop or end to end. So we're gonna talk about five today. Let's get started, stay with me. Okay, the first bend we're going to tie is gonna be the double fisherman's. The double fisherman's a very good bend to use if you're trying to make a loop in one strand of line so that you can later use that loop for a prussic loop to create a prussic hitch for prussic ing. We'll talk about that down the road. So to make this bend, we're going to take our length of rope and we're going to cross the two tails over each other. We're basically going to take this tail, wrap around this line two times, and when we come around that second time, we're going to go through the two loops that we created and dress that down. So we have two loops over this line. Then we can adjust this tail for length by sliding it through. And we're going to do exactly the same thing on this side. Go around once, go around twice, and the second time around, we're going to feed it through both loops, just like this. Dress everything down. When we pull those together, we'll have a double fisherman's. So the POV here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cross these lines over. And what I like to do is just not pay attention to one side of this thing at all. And just take this one, kind of tie it around my finger, over twice, and then through the loops, and dress it down, just like that. Turn it around and do the same thing. I kind of go around my finger two times like that and then through the two loops, just like this, and dress it down. And when you pull it together, you're gonna have a double fisherman's. You pull in those tails, it comes apart. But the more pressure you put on it this direction, the tighter it's gonna get. Okay, the next one we're gonna look at is called the sheet bend, and the sheet bend can be used for connecting ropes that are two different diameters. Traditionally, it was used for connecting sheet or sail material to a rope. We'll talk about that in a minute. If you're going to connect two ropes of unequal diameter, which is where this knot shines really well, the bend in the rope needs to be the larger diameter. Then you're gonna take the smaller diameter rope and bring it up through and around and then down underneath, just like this almost in a figure eight, and bring it down taut, just like this. And that was also called the weaver's knot. It's the same knot that you use when you tie off a fishing net, this being one of the V's in the fishing net, and you coming around with that half inch motion and going back down through creates that weaver's knot or sheet bend. Now, if you're going to try to make a really secure connection on something like a makeshift hammock, an improvised hammock, or something you're gonna put a lot of weight on, you would want to come around this line twice to the inside. So you come around one time, come around that loop a second time, and then bring it through and dress it down. You'll have what's called a double sheet bend. And I would even go so much as to use a triple sheet bend if I were gonna use this for something like an improvised hammock. If I'm going to use this on a piece of sheeting or material, like an improvised hammock, 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bite of that material, lay my line in there and fold it over the top, just like this. Then I'm going to come around the back side, drop down through. That gives me a normal sheet bend. Now, if I were gonna use this same sheet bend for something like an improvised hammock, it's gonna be load bearing. This single sheet bend isn't gonna give me the security that I would want. So I'm going to give myself enough tail to be able to come around this inside probably three times. So there's two times around, three times around. Then I'm going to begin to dress things down tightly. And then I can be pretty confident that there's no way that tail is going to pull through there. Okay, let's look at that sheet bend from a POV. We're going to take our larger diameter rope and make our bite. A smaller diameter rope is going to come around and behind. And this is going to create our bend and basically back underneath, just like this. Looks almost like a figure of eight at that point. And when we dress it down, that gives us a single sheet bend or weaver's knot. And if we go around twice, It'll give us a double. Three times will give us a triple like we used on the improvised hammock demo. Okay, the next connection we want to talk about is the reef knot. And the reason we're talking about the reef knot is because it's a really good loop-to-loop -loop connection to use. But we're going to show you on line first. So if we take two lines and we cross one over the other, and we go left over right and then underneath, and then we go right over left and underneath, we're going to end up with what's called a reef knot or a square knot. When we pull on ends, it's going to lock itself up just like that. Now, you have to be careful with slick rope with this because it can slip and you might need security knots on both sides. However, if you're not putting a lot of force on it, you don't have to worry about that. Okay, let's talk about the reef knot in a loop to loop connection scenario because that's where it really shines. If I'm using something like a leader that's got a fishing hook attached to it or some type of bait and I need to change that in and out or even a trap snare loop of some kind on the other end and I wanna change that in and out, anything that I need to change back and forth from a loop to loop connection up to and including my utility ropes for a connection between the two, I can just take that loop and put the standing end up through that leader line or that running end and then pull that running end through the loop, just like this. And it gives me that loop to loop connection in a reef knot or a square knot that when I wanna change things out, is very easy to release, pull back through and get off of there and change it out and go on to the next one. Okay, let's look at this square knot or reef knot from a POV. We're going left over the right and underneath. And then we're going right over the left and underneath. And that gives us a square knot. The mistake here of a granny knot comes from going left over the right and left over right again. When you pull that down, you're going to get a twisted granny knot that when you pull on that, it's going to come undone and slip. It's not going to self tighten like your reef knot does. Okay, the next connection we're gonna talk about is the Zeppelin bend. And the Zeppelin bend is very good for two ropes of equal diameter that you're going to connect together. It's a very strong connection of those two ropes. So what we're going to do is we're going to put an overhand loop in the line and flip that over, just like this. We're gonna take an overhand loop in this line and lay it flat, just like this. Then we're going to take this loop and put it on top of this loop. This tail is going to go through this direction and this tail is going to go through the opposite direction, just like this. When we dress that down and pull it together, we'll have a Zeppelin bend. It comes undone fairly easily by pulling on these two loops that are on opposite sides of the rope, just like this. Okay, let's take a look at this Zeppelin bend. We're gonna take one overhand loop and flip it, just like this. Another overhand loop and leave it lay. We're gonna put this loop on top of this one. We're gonna bring this rope down through both loops here, and this rope up through both loops here. So we end up with this. 
almost like two interlocking overhand knots at this point. And when we pull on both ends and dress things down, we end up with a Zeppelin bend. Okay, the last bend we're gonna talk about today is the water knot. The reason we're talking about this knot in particular is because it's very good for webbing and web straps. So if you have to connect two pieces of webbing together, or you need to create a circle in webbing, some type of a loop, you can use this water knot for that. Bear in mind that if you're gonna use it for load bearing, you want to give yourself enough tail on each side of the knot to tie some type of security in there. It's a very simple knot to tie. We're going to put an overhand knot in one side of the webbing or the line, and then we're going to come in and retrace that same knot just like this with the other piece. And as we dress that down and we pull on it, we're gonna have a water knot. Now, again, we have tail on both sides so that if we need to tie any security knots in here, we can do so if this is going to be load bearing. Okay, so let's look at the POV on this water knot. We're going to take one side or one piece and tie an overhand knot. We're gonna take the second side or the attaching piece and we're going to retrace that same knot just like this coming around back down through so that we have two interlocking overhand knots as we dress this down just like that all right guys well, i'm david canterbury with self-reliance outfitters in the pathfinder school and i appreciate you joining me out here today for another video in our rope clinic do me a favor before you leave and subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell and tell one of your buddies about my channel as well. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks.